Hi, it's Jesse, and it's been a rough week. We left our home in Brooklyn on Friday, and I don't know when we'll be back. My wife and I put the baby and the dog in the back of the Subaru, and I sat right between them, with the dog's head on my knee while I read books to the baby. We drove 19 hours to her hometown in Mississippi. We'll quarantine here for a couple of weeks, and then if everyone's healthy, we'll move in with their mom. I have all kinds of feelings about it. I'm really sad to leave my things, my friends, my community. I'm anxious that neither of us get sick. I feel so guilty about leaving and really grateful that we have this great option to go to. I'm grateful that I can keep recording our show and talking to you all, confused about what we should be talking about. Let's face it, it's a weird time to be talking about careers and how to grow them while we're also thinking a lot about whether we're healthy the people around us, how they are. And I guess that's part of the reason why I called my friend Nancy Lublin. Nancy runs Crisis Text Line. Nancy gets this real-time stream of information about how we're all feeling. You know, sometimes when we're feeling so bad, the one thing we can do to feel better is help other people. I made this call hopeful that I'd learn about how people were feeling. But I finished this call certain that I was going to sign up to be a volunteer crisis text counselor. You can too. Here's Nancy. So here we are at the end of March. What are you seeing at crisis text line right now? We're seeing two waves of mental health crisis. First wave has been anxiety. Huge uptick in anxiety and the intensity of the anxiety, mostly mirroring the locations where the virus is showing up. So as that's increasing, so is the anxiety we're seeing. The second wave we feared we would see, and it is now happening, that is the impact of the virus itself and the impact of the quarantines. So for example, uh, 6% of our conversations typically reference the word home. 14% of conversations are now referencing the word home. And in those conversations, we're seeing 2x normal rates of child abuse, domestic violence, and substance abuse. Those are all, that's the impact of quarantines, of being stuck at home with someone who's abusive, of, um, of not having, having your, your sort of typical safety plans in place. Um, so that's the second wave and, and it's just started. That's terrifying, Nancy. I, I want to talk a little bit about how you're seeing this. So for people who aren't familiar with Crisis Text Line, how does it work? It's 24-7 mental and behavioral health support at your fingertips. So it's, it's all things in one place. Um, and you don't have to download it. It's not an app. It's 741741 in the United States. And you text us 24-7 for free. There's a trained empathetic crisis counselor on the other side. And how many crisis counselors do you have? Were you, are you In other words, are you prepared for... What I assume, what I have to assume, is just a huge spike in text coming in. It, we have seen growth. Right now, we're at about forty-seven percent increase over um, what's uh, where we were before the crisis. Um, you know, it's not even day to day. Some days it's two x volume. Um, uh, we're basically a marketplace if you think about it. So we don't control supply, we don't control demand because the supply side are these volunteer crisis counselors. The demand side, people in pain. And they're both out of our control. But what's amazing is that one shows up and the other shows up. They, they typically do happen lockstep. So we're seeing a lot more pain in America right now. And we are seeing this community freaking rally. I mean, I refer to these volunteers as empathy MVPs. That's kind of my nickname for them. And they're just, even though some of them are in pain too, right? Like they're experiencing the same crisis, but they are just rallying and we are outperforming on every KPI right now. We're freaking crushing it. And I wish I could hug and kiss every one of these people, even though I know that's a very bad idea right now. But um, I don't even know them on a good day, on like a normal day. Yeah. No hugging and kissing strangers right now. No. And, but I've never met these people. No, I've never met these people. I mean, we are the epitome of physical distance, social connection. That's literally what we are. For a lot of us who are at home feeling isolated, wondering how we can be involved in what's going on, there's a sense that we can't do any of the things we once would have done. There are so few things that we can do outside of our living room. This is something we can do outside of our living room. I want you on your couch 
Yes. I want you on your couch in your jammies with your laptop. That's, and that's, that's where our volunteers are. And they are, they're everywhere. I mean, they're in rural communities and cities. They are moms, they're students, they're veterans. Um, they're over the age of 70, they're 18. I mean, they're so diverse and you apply online, go through a background check and about a 30 hour training. And then you volunteer when you can, when you want to, when you feel strong enough, when you have time. So 30 hour training as in I could sign up this afternoon and, and how long would it take me to get through this training? If you really crammed it, the whole thing would be about four days. You would apply today. You'd be approved within 24 hours. You'd have a background check. And then you could, you could cram in the training. If, you, if, you know, if you've binged like The Wire, you could probably binge this. <laughs> okay. I've binged The Wire <laughs> twice. Um, oh. Oh, Jesse, you should apply. <laughs> <laughs> I should apply. And I'm going to apply, Nancy. Great, um, great. Because now it's is the time. To do. And, and it's something to Now's do. Now's the time. Right? It's something Now's to the do. Time. And, so it, and to feel connected, right? To feel connected and to feel like you're making a difference right now. And so if I'm a counselor, uh, what are the kinds of things that are being presented to me? What are the kinds of calls that I get? And what do I do when something feels too big to handle? So what's really beautiful is none of it is too big to handle. You're an empathetic person. You've had this amazing training. The first thing that happens on the platform is the algorithm stack ranks the queue based on severity. So the people who are at imminent risk are number one in the queue and they're coded orange. So those are the people at risk of um, harm to themselves or frankly someone else. So suicide or homicide. It's a very, it's, it's not a huge percentage of what we do. So odds are you won't get one of those kinds of conversations. But even if you do, um, you're not alone. First of all, you have your training. And second of all, on the platform at all times, we have paid supervisors who are people with a master's degree in a relevant field like social work or psych. And they are watching every conversation in real time. And they have your back. And they can direct message with you if you feel stuck or you need some reassurance. Um, they can say, try asking this question. Or, hey, that was a really good job, Jesse. That was a really great thing you just said. And if it gets the point, and it rarely gets this point, it's less than 1% of our conversations, but if it gets the point where your supervisor determines that we need to call 911, it's your supervisor who will make that call, um, not you. So you're really, you're not alone. You're on there with other crisis counselors, you're on there with algorithms, and you're on there with um, supervisors. So let's talk about the kinds of things that you're seeing right now that are different than the kinds of things you were seeing before the pandemic. You said there was a huge spike in anxiety. Huge spike in anxiety, a lot of anxiety, anxiety co-presenting with financial issues. Interesting, before uh, COVID, um, 53% of our volume was from people under the age of 17. So young, you know, the majority of our texters, young people in pain. And it has shifted. The kids are all right, is what I've been telling people, especially my friends who are parents. The kids, the kids are all right. They are sleeping. They're not worried about exams or school right now, and there's no relationship drama right now because there are no relationships right now for them. So um, the people who are really struggling are 18 to 34, who all of a sudden find themselves either single and, and feeling isolated and alone or moving back in at home, and that's unfamiliar, worried about their finances and their future. So 18 to 34. And last week, we saw a big jump in the 44 to 55-year-old um, age bracket. So me, um, <laughs> worried about our older parents, um, uh, worried about finances, um, uh, worried about our kids, um, seeing what's happening with the stock market, a lot of mentions of finances. So you're in the business of taking the pressure off, the, the, the first line pressure off here. What, what makes it better? And this, Nancy, this oh, is really... Oh, we're seeing some... This no, that's a good question. I, I ask Do you, are you asking for you or for this podcast? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I'm asking for me it's all because the same of the right podcast. Now. It's all the yeah. same right now. And, and you know, I yeah. think a lot of us are wondering, I know I am, right? I'm talking to my friends and some of them are, are saying the same kinds of things that you are expressing. And I, so often I'm, I'm just thinking, well, how can I help? I can't go over and take your kids. Like, what can I do? Let me tell you the things that they are saying that work in helping people move from a really hot moment to 
feeling a bit more calm and control. There's a few things that are working. One is the word mom. Everybody wants their mommy right now. It's really quite lovely because normally mom shows up as a tough word, as a word related to school pressure, stress, anxiety, things like that. Um, right now, it's a mom moment. Um, everybody wants their mom. So what and you're so, saying is, it, just so I'm, I'm, I'm understanding this right, so normally when, you, when the word mom appears in texts, you can, it's not often good. You can examine those texts and know that that, that, that is the cause of the problem. But right now, it's, well, it seems to be a bit of the solution. Mom's, mom's having a good moment. I'm, you know, by mom right now. Mom is, mom is having a good moment. And that's, that's fantastic because most people have one or a mom in their life who they can spend time with. And so, um, yeah, family associations are big right now. Um, after mom, it's friends and then pets. People are really want to snuggle with their pets right now. Pets are big right now. Um, I knew the so rest of pets, the world would family, one day love really, dogs as much as I love dogs. <laughs> so it's it's pets, and you're right, dogs in the lead, but it's pets, friends, and mom are the three things that are kind of leading those, um, like things you want to snuggle with right now. Another thing that we are seeing working is taking this awful, overwhelming, unknown thing and shrinking it down into a bite-sized time period. So saying, well, what are your plans tonight? What are you going to do tonight? Or tell me, how could you feel strong tomorrow? What's something you can do for yourself tomorrow? So just tonight, tomorrow, bite-sized little time frames that feel controllable to help someone feel stronger and a sense of calm. So those are some of the things we're seeing working. You know, you run an organization where you have employees, and then you have this army of volunteers. And all of those people are also being impacted by this pandemic, sometimes in very strong ways. How do you help them to show up for other people? We like to say, you can't pour from an empty cup. And so the first thing is that you matter. Um, you got to fill your own cup. And especially in an organization like Crisis Text Line, which, which is a not-for-profit. Like, I don't make, I don't make Nilla wafers. I don't make um, uh, masks or ventilators. Like, I don't make something right now. What it is is it's feelings. Um, that's the thing that we make. And so that depends on our most important asset. And our most important asset, are, that's our people. That's our volunteers and our staff. So it's super important that their cups are full. Um, we've offered free daily meditation. Um, and so it's the community coming together. Um, that's been really nice. It's 15 minutes every day. And that's a really sweet touch point, especially I think for people who are isolated and by themselves to connect. So here's another hopeful thing, Jesse. Um, and it starts dark, but then it turns, it turns lighter. So typically 5% of our texters identify as Asian Right now, we're seeing more than 10% of our texters identify as Asian, and they're, it's largely they're talking about bullying and harassment and depression. It's a tough time for the Asian um, community in America. But then we notice something else. Our applications to be crisis counselors, typically about 10 to 12% of them identify as Asian, and right now, 27% of our applications identify as Asian. Here is a community that's getting hammered out there right now and that feels awful. It's tough right now being Asian. One of our staff, her brother, was beaten up. I mean, really, this is a tough time. And yet they're turning this into, I want to give back to other people. I want to make strangers feel safe and cared for. I think that's freaking beautiful. That gives me chills. That gives me chills. Yeah. Just just... I, we're seeing some good things. To step back for a minute. Um, you know, even before the pandemic hit, 2020 was a year that everybody had begun talking about mental health differently. A lot of big companies started adding increasing benefits around mental health. There was a sense that mental health was an emergency already in the United States. And then this came along. H how does this change our, our understanding of mental health? I like to say I'm in a growth industry. I'm in the business of pain. And um, it's a growth industry. Um, I'd love to go out of business, uh, but I, I don't see that anytime soon. I think um, 
you are seeing companies offer more mental health benefits. I mean, look, the biggest section in the bookstore is the happiness section now. I think you're seeing people think deeply about what makes them feel happy or now feel control as a baseline. I think you are seeing more companies pay attention to this. I think you're seeing more startups um, in this mental health space, which is great to see, like BetterHelp and Talkspace and um, Headspace, Calm, so Shine, so many um, startups in this space, which I'm thrilled to see. So Nancy, how about you personally? Uh, how are you weathering the quarantine? I mean, I'm not wearing pants right now. <laughs> um, and I feel like I'm eating a lot of Nabisco Nilla wafers. Um, my, my COVID-19 is, uh, I think, going to mirror my freshman 15. I'm just, I'm like, I'm definitely doing some stress eating. I'm, um, uh, I don't know, I taught my kids to play poker. Feels really good to check raise your 12 year old. <laughs> um, there are some people who will hear that and actually know what that means. It's really, it's a mean move in poker. And, you know, I'm, I'm doing it like to my 12 year old. So, like, I'm finding, I'm finding those places. But um, honestly, uh, I, I'm really proud to be part of this organization. Like, if there are ways to help other people right now, that's kind of a beautiful gift. Thank you, Nancy. That's awesome. That was Nancy Lublin, founder of Crisis Text Line. Thanks for all the messages you all have been sending. Keep them coming at hellomonday at linkedin.com. Tell me what you think we should be talking about right now. What matters to you? And tell me how you are. Thanks for listening. Stay home if you can. And if you're on the front lines, thank you. See you on Monday.